what's up brother today i've got a special build to make special plays for special players it's a setup that's guaranteed to absolutely stomp the new onslaught horde mode with a permanent 25 percent void weapon damage buff full heals on every kill and the ability to have a roaming super that can last literally over a minute long. And to prove that, if you hadn't noticed, I've been in the same super for this entire intro so far. So without further delay, let's get into the build. Things kick off with one of the most secretly strong exotic titan gauntlets in the game, the Doom Fang Pauldrons, which on top of looking ridiculously cool, grant a whole ton of benefits to both our void weapons and our super ability uptime. For starters, while wearing this exotic, every set of void multi-kills, aka 2 to 3 kills within 10 seconds of each other, grants one stack of void weapon surge for 11 seconds. At one stack of void surge, this provides a 10% weapon damage buff to all of your void weapons, jumping up to 17% at 2 stacks, 22% at 3 stacks, and capping out at a whopping 25% at 4 stacks. And, once at 4 stacks of Void Weapon Surge, any Void Weapon Kill will fully refresh your Void Weapon Surge buff timer back up to the maximum 11 seconds. Furthermore, when dishing out a powered void melee ability kill, not only do these exotic gauntlets immediately reward all four stacks of that void weapon surge, but they also provide an astonishing 20% of your super energy, meaning that simply five powered melee kills would in theory provide you a fully charged super ability. But there's more, because once you activate your super ability, these gauntlets have even more benefits that you can take advantage of to run the show. But before we talk about those added super-based benefits, let's first talk about our super selection, the Sentinel Shield. Sentinel Shield is a very potent super, granting 90% damage resistance while active and equipping you with three different moves. The first, your light attack, allows you to simply lunge and deal damage to close ranged enemies. The second, your heavy attack, allows you to put up your impenetrable shield wall to block all incoming damage whilst still allowing your allies to shoot through it and granting them a 40% damage buff and 50 stat handling and reload speed buff at the same time. The final move of this super is used with the grenade button, which on a 3 second recharge cooldown allows you to throw your shield at enemies ricocheting from enemy to enemy and dealing massive damage. But what is really cool with marrying this super ability and the Doomfang Pauldron's exotic gauntlets together is twofold. First, any Sentinel Shield throw hits refund 10% of your super energy, extending the duration of your super to make for those literal minute-long supers we showcased in the intro of the video. And to make that shield throw available to refund super energy as much as possible, we can look to the second component of the Doomfang Pauldron Sentinel Shield synergy, which provides refunded shield throw energy when defeating targets with the melee light attack of the Sentinel Shield, greatly incentivizing you to alternate between shield throws and melee attacks while in your sentinel shield super. And remember how I said that every single powered melee kill instantly grants 20% of your super energy? Well it is for that reason that now is probably a good time to mention that I highly recommend the shield bash shoulder charge melee ability for this build, not only because it does significantly more damage than its shield throw alternative, making those final blows easier to land, 
but because it also provides the user with an overshield when landing final blows with the ability, something that is extremely important for the neutral game of this build for reasons that you'll see a bit later in the video. Now, sure, the super aspect of this build is insanely powerful, but what about annihilating constant waves of enemies when we don't have our super available? Well, that is where the rest of the build comes in handy, starting with one of the most fun to use and most powerful void exotic weapons in the entire game, the Manticore Exotic Submachine Gun. We just went over this submachine gun in very great detail in my Jerfalcon's Halberg Hunter Onslaught build guide video, but the gist of it is quite simple in nature. While on the ground, you gain charge towards your anti-grav repulsor's buff meter for every hit that you land on enemies, with kills granting significantly more charge towards your anti-grav repulsors. Then, when dealing damage while airborne, your character will enter into hover mode, where each hit will drain 1% of your anti-grav repulsor's meter. The benefit of being in hover mode, however, is that enemies become significantly less accurate at targeting you, and you accrue a manticore weapon damage buff the longer you're in the air, specifically an extra 10% damage every 0.6 seconds spent airborne, capping out at a 100% damage buff after six seconds of airtime. It's also worth noting that this 100% hover mode manticore damage buff will also stack with your 25% void weapon Doomfang pauldrons buff. Furthermore, the catalyst of this weapon spices things up even more, refunding 12 ammo to Manticore's magazine and providing the user with a void overshield every time you score an airborne kill or land 5 hits against any non-red bar target while in hover mode. And as I said before, that void overshield is going to be extremely important for a few other aspects of this build that we will discuss in just a moment. But before we touch on those aspects, fragments, alternate weapon options, and mods, I want to note that this build looks insanely good with the predominantly purple Watcher's Shade Shader, an exclusive in-game item that you can actually obtain by stopping by my live stream at twitch.tv slash and gifting two subscriptions while I'm live, which is typically every day starting at Destiny Daily Reset Time. Alternatively, you can join the Discord server linked in the description below to be notified anytime I go live and anytime I post a new build video. Now, the reason I keep emphasizing the importance of having void over shields has everything to do with the first aspect choice of this build, Offensive Bulwark which while in possession of a void overshield, grants us increased melee lunge range, 100% increased melee damage, and 400% additional base grenade regeneration rate. As a result, investing a lot of our fragments and mods into grenade usage and grenade effects makes even the non-super neutral game of this build extremely powerful. This probably makes now a good time to mention that my two favorite grenades for this build are either the Scatter Grenade for extremely fast burst damage on a very low grenade cooldown, or the Vortex Grenade for large AoE map control and damage thanks to its suction effects. But we aren't done with Offensive Bulwark yet, because this aspect also provides a second shield throw to the Sentinel Shield Super, making it even easier to extend the Super to last for minutes at a time thanks to the effects of Doomfang Pauldrons. For the second aspect of this build, we are going with Controlled Demolition, which allows Void Ability Damage and Volatile Explosions to apply the Volatile Effect to enemies. Additionally, triggering Volatile Explosions will also provide a 90 HP heal to both yourself and all allies within 40 meters. Now that aspect might not sound particularly impressive on its own, but when we link it together with our constant grenade spam and our first void fragment, it actually becomes very, very powerful. Speaking of which, let's talk about our void fragments now, beginning with the Echo of Instability, which rewards the user with volatile rounds on all void weapons for 11 seconds when getting a kill with a grenade. 
As a result, the basic idea here is that by hitting enemies with Manticore while airborne, we will receive a Void Overshield to increase our grenade regeneration rate by 400%. Then, we will throw our grenade at enemies to create volatile explosions through controlled demolition and, should it kill an enemy, reward ourselves with volatile rounds. We can then use those volatile rounds to rip up every other enemy to continuously create additional volatile explosions, healing us and all nearby allies, and spreading even more volatile to all nearby enemies. But to be even safer in more enemy-dense content like Onslaught, Fragment slot number two will be fitted with the Echo of Starvation, so that we receive the Devour buff anytime we pick up an Orb of Power or a Void Breach, which as I'm sure you remember, on every single kill will extend its duration, grant a 100 HP heal, and refund a chunk of grenade energy depending on the tier of the enemy. In fragment slot number three, we will go with the Echo of Persistence to not only increase the duration of our Devour and Overshield buff timers, but to also increase the duration increase we receive to Devour from every kill while in possession of it. Finally for fragments, since this build has such strong super ability synergy, we are rocking with the Echo of Reprisal for significantly increased super energy gains when defeating enemies while near three or more targets, which in a mode like Onslaught will be no problem at all. Now before we touch on the armor mod setup for this build to take things up to the highest level, I do want to briefly mention that while Manticore is extremely fun and good for this build, it is not required by any means. The only thing about Manticore that I would say is extremely important for this setup is its void overshield granting capabilities, something that can be mimicked by void legendary weapons that have the Repulsor Brace trait which grants a 45 HP overshield when defeating a void debuffed target, something that will be quite common thanks to all of the volatile from the Echo of Instability and controlled demolition. Weapons that fall under this category are things like the Optative and Word of Crota Hand Cannons, the Doom of Chelchis and Vouchsafe Scout Rifles, the Ross Argos 4 Auto Rifle, the Unforgiven SMG, and newly back to Destiny with Into the Light, the Elsie's Rifle Pulse Rifle or Recluse SMG. So whilst Manticore is extremely good for this build, feel free to experiment with legendary Repulsor Brace weapons for situations where you want to run a kinetic or heavy exotic weapon. Now to wrap things up with our mod setup, we begin on the helmet with a Harmonic Siphon for Orb of Power Generation on Void Weapon Multi-Kills, Ashes to Assets for increased super energy gains on Grenade Final Blows, and Font of Wisdom for a 30 stat bonus to Intellect when Armor Charged. Moving to the gloves, I recommend Harmonic Loader for increased Void Weapon Reload Speed, Firepower for Orb of Power Generation on Grenade Final Blows, and Momentum Transfer for a chunk of melee ability energy refund when dealing grenade damage. Down on the chest, I simply urge you towards resistance mods depending on the damage type of enemies in whatever activity you are running. On the boots, I like using a copy of Harmonic Scavenger for increased heavy ammo on Brick Pickup in the event you are using a Void Heavy Weapon, Invigoration for a chunk of melee ability energy on Orb Pickup, and a copy of Absolution for a chunk of energy to all three basic abilities, also when picking up an Orb of Power. Finally, on the class item, you'll want to take Reaper for Orb of Power Generation on Weapon Final Blows after Class Ability Cast, and copies of Bomber and Outreach for chunks of grenade and melee ability refunds respectively when casting that very class ability. As for stats, you'll prioritize Resilience as your number one priority, followed by Intellect in the number two slot, and Discipline as stat number three. 
And if you want to get in game and start winning with this build right now, simply scroll down to the description for the Destiny Item Manager link that will automatically copy all of this over to your Guardian in just one click. Coincidentally, it's right next to the like and subscribe buttons down there as well. Up to you what you want to do with those. And for more incredible onslaught builds or end game PVE Destiny content, consider stopping by my live stream at twitch.tv slash so I can say hi to you and thank you personally for watching my videos. Hope to see you in there. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great day.